So if the Earth's continents moved, how? That's the big question that we're going to try to answer today. What should we know by the end of our time together? We want to know why plate tectonics is the accepted theory to scientifically explain the motions of Earth's lithosphere. Now, I'm going to be referring to uh, this as a note page. Um, when we come to these spots in the presentation, you're going to need to write these things down, and I'll try to, remember, uh, to remind you uh, along the way. So let's get right into it then. How are we going to know that plate tectonics is the accepted theory? We're first going to talk about what continental drift theory said because this idea came first. We'll look at the three pieces of evidence that were used by Alfred Wegener to create this idea, this theory. And then after a bit of a problem with this theory, what accidental discovery 50 years later led to this whole revision and new way of thinking called plate tectonics. So continental drift theory says that the continents were once assembled together as a single supercontinent that Alfred Wegener in 1912 named Pangaea. He was a German uh, meteorologist and scientist. And here's basically what that means. Long ago, probably about 300 million years or so ago, you had all the Earth's land gathered into one called Pangaea, and then over time these continents moved to today their current locations. Now, you can't just make a claim like that without evidence. So what were his pieces of evidence? Well, here's the first one. Wegener saw that the coastlines of North America, Europe, Africa, and South America appeared to fit together with a little bit of imagination. I'm sure you've probably thought of this yourself, looking in, uh, spending time in one of your elementary school classrooms. Uh, of course, there are world maps everywhere in every elementary school across the country. And I'm sure at some point in time, uh, through your boredom of uh, a test or some assignment, you looked at that world map and thought, huh, South America sure looks like with a little bit of tilting it could fit right up there next to Africa. Well, Wegener thought the same thing. Second piece of evidence, animal and plant fossils on different continents matched. And these continents today are thousands of miles apart. How could these land-dwelling, oxygen-breathing animals survive swimming 3,000 miles across an ocean without stopping to land on a new continent? And the answer is, well, they can't. So finding these fossils on different continents must mean that these continents at one time were much closer together or even touching so that these animals could survive a journey to a different continent. Third and last piece of evidence that these uh, rock layers suggest continents experienced different climates than they do in modern times. These ancient rock assemblages, some of them uh, referred to especially in the north, uh, part, northern part of North America called cratons, these, uh, on these uh, areas here uh, of orange rock, there are also um, glacial scrapes. And there is no reason why we should expect to see glacial scrapes in West Africa, where today you've got deserts. Unless, of course, then the... Uh, Explanation must be that Africa at one point was in a colder place where glaciers existed. Same with South America. So these locations must have experienced different climates than they do today. You take all these pieces into consideration and you see why this led Wegener to conclude that at one point all these continents of our Earth were joined and they were at a different location than they are today. However, there's a big problem with continental drift. While it explains that there was Pangaea a long time ago, it has no suitable explanation for how the continents moved. What was the mechanism to make it all happen? Wegener had no idea. For years, he had no clue. Until, pressed one, uh, until finally being pressed so many times, he finally offered this explanation. I don't know, maybe the oceans pushed around the continents. This, of course, is unfortunately impossible, and he was laughed off the scientific stage. His idea was thrown out. And for 50 years, we heard no new uh, uh, headway. We made no new headway in this idea. So did they move, if they moved, how, or did they move at all? Well, there was an accidental discovery. While uh, 
50 years afterwards that led to a whole new way of thinking. And this way of thinking started by looking in the one place Wegener didn't look, the ocean floor. Scanning, uh, scans of the ocean floor revealed something startling as the United States Navy was trying to map the ocean floor to allow submarine navigation to be safer. They discovered that, well, instead of a sandy, flat ocean floor, we instead, in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, found a gigantic volcano that ran the distance, that ran the length of the Atlantic Ocean. Furthermore, through in additional investigation, we found that different stripes on either side of the volcano, uh, the uh, iron and other magnetic properties inside these strips of rock would point north in this strip, but in this strip of rock, north was that way. And then in this strip of rock, north was this way again, and then in the next strip, north was that way. So it led us to these ideas that the polarity of the Earth's magnetic field has been shifting and changing over the course of the last several million years. And also, if we take a look at the age of this rock on either side, and your volcano is this center white stripe that goes down the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, we find that through um, dating the rock, the rock closest to this volcano is very young, whereas the rock on the farthest away from the volcano leading up to the continents, this rock out here is very, very old, which means the seafloor is spreading in the Atlantic Ocean. How does that work? Well, this is how seafloor spreading works right here. Tectonic plates splitting apart from each other, allowing magma to flow up from the asthenosphere to create new ocean floor. This is a part of your notes. It goes under um, how does seafloor spreading work. And here's a picture that shows it in a little more detail. We know the example of the lava lamp the heat source of the outer core turns and churns the mantle material like the bubbles and blobs of the lava lamp. Well, at the top of the lava lamp, these bubbles finally hit the lithosphere and the bubbles or the blobs split from each other. Where the blobs split apart from each other and head left and right, that is where these cracks in the crust start to exist and the left crust moves left and the right crust slides right and that explains the spreading of the crust there. But because the Earth doesn't get any larger, if we're creating new ocean crust here, we must somewhere else be consuming old crust. And that's what happens when these blobs from these lava lamps instead converge and pull back down towards the outer core after they've cooled down. This is called slab pull. When part of the crust of our Earth gets pulled down with those blobs, this gets crushed and superheated and recycled back into mantle material, where later somewhere else it'll get burped up on top of our crust to create mountains or ocean floor or whatever. So seafloor spreading, this whole idea of convection in the mantle driven by the outer core's heat, is what's recycling our crust. At least that's what we think is happening. So what are these pieces of evidence to support this idea of plate tectonics? Well, plate tectonics is the idea that all of our lithosphere is broken up into these large slabs called plates, and they move relative to each other. What's the evidence to support this idea of plate tectonics? Here is the first, seafloor spreading. Now, there's two other pieces of evidence for, to support the idea of plate tectonics. Here's the second, earthquake locations. If we took the sites of earthquakes and plotted them on a map over the last 50 or 60 years, they would reveal the boundary lines of the tectonic plates. Here's an example. Every red dot on this map is, a, is an earthquake or a volcanic eruption. And when plotted on a map, they reveal the boundaries of many of these plates that our crust is broken up into. Now, some of these red dots form out in the middle of plates. There's reasons for those, and we'll get to that in time. But not in the course of this video explanation. Oh, by the way, here's that mid-Atlantic Ocean Ridge that Harry Hess, the admiral from, or the sea captain from the United States Navy, that he helped discover 
50, 60 years ago. There it is. So we can map out the locations of these plates because we have tectonic data. And the final piece of evidence to support plate tectonics, GPS, global positioning satellites. If we think we know the boundary between these two plates, we can put a GPS receiver on this side of the North American plate, and we can put a GPS receiver on this side of the Pacific plate and monitor their movements over the course of days, weeks, months, and years. Well, we have, and here's what we've discovered. This new technology of taking GPS to track plates, we've been able to measure the speed and the direction of these plates moving through time. And it's revealed that the average plate speed is roughly one millimeter per day, or the speed at which your fingernails grow. Of course, some plates move faster and other plates move slower. So what should you know now? You should know why plate tectonics is the accepted theory to scientifically explain the motions of Earth's lithosphere. Which, of course, you can, because continental drift only explained that we had Pangaea. Continental drift did not explain how we got it. Well, plate tectonics explains how we got Pangaea and how the continents moved to where they are today. It's all because of the convection happening inside the mantle material, from that mantle material uh, reacting uh, the heat of the outer core, and in turn the motions of the mantle helps crack and break our crust into big pieces we call plates, and they move relative to each other depending on how the convection currents of the mantle may move them. So I hope you enjoyed this quick explanation, and I hope that it prepares you for later learning. Have a great day.